NASCAR has another new champion, another season in the books. We'll talk about Ryan Blaney winning his championship in a moment. Wins gonna punch his ticket to the championship four. Got him this time. Oh, he turned it. No. Big room. Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt. There's another seven-time champ. Heard by Legato. Maybe no. Kenza takes him out. Le Using lessons learned from his father to go from sixth to first and score the victory with a Pepsi 400. 20 years of trying. 20 years of frustration. Three flags in the air. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Cameron Simpson and NASCAR fans, thank you for being with me on this Monday. Kind of going back to the classic days of having videos on Mondays. It's just great to have you guys with me. Yesterday NASCAR put a bow on the 2023 season and called it a year during their championship race where four drivers set out to win the championship. Ryan Blaney was the one who got the chip. And a huge congratulations to Ryan Blaney. He deserves all the congratulations that are going to come to him today, tomorrow, in the next few days. Uh, he is the NASCAR champion. Penske brings home its second NASCAR Cup Series championship in two years. So, two in a row. Huge accomplishment for Roger Penske, who I'll talk about this later on. I argue may now be NASCAR's most winning motorsports, biggest winners ever and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well but first and foremost Ryan Blaney let's talk about the champion and coming into these playoffs I don't know if I would have had Ryan Blaney as the most deserving candidate right I don't even know if I, I didn't have him on my short list to win the championship and I don't even know if I had him on my long list to win the championship coming into this year I believe I had him as a second round exit I really do think Ryan Blaney was a dark horse pick to win this championship coming in from the regular season and coming off a year last year where he didn't win a race, and then coming into these playoffs with, I mean, a tough stretch towards the end of the season, and just an overall tough go of it as of late. He comes in the playoffs, and he does what a champion's supposed to do, and that's win races. He came in, he won a race, he won another race, he won another race, and the last round of the playoffs, the round of eight, where he knew he had to win, what does he do? He goes out and wins. He did what a true champion should embark on doing. Now, though some of you might say, he didn't deserve it. He, he didn't deserve it. He had a bad regular season. I like to say this. Like, to those of you that think, and I know there's a lot of fans out there that say, I hate how it comes down to just one race, where whatever you else you did in the playoffs, it doesn't matter, or what you did in the regular season, it doesn't matter, and it just comes down to one race. And I'm actually a fan of it coming down to one race. This is something I've enjoyed in motorsports for a really long time. I've liked having the one race aspect. This is it. This is where it's all at. But I know some older fans probably liked the old format where it was an accumulation of points throughout the season. And if you had the most at the end of the year, you won. But that's not really appealing to the younger audience. Honestly, that wouldn't be appealing to me. I, I mean, I would still watch the races. I would still enjoy it. But I feel like that would take away from the goal of that final race of the season. So I, I get the argument. I get there's some of you out here that think there's no point in this, right? It only takes one race. It only takes a hot streak in the playoffs and a cold streak in the playoffs to ruin your season. Yes, it does. But that happens in all other sports as well. Look at the Stanley Cup, for instance. It takes a cold streak or a hot streak to win the Stanley Cup. It really does. And... Ryan Blaney is a guy who I feel like teeters and totters in motorsports. Like, he's has his highs and he has his wicked lows. Remember where he started? He started at Wood Brothers Race. And you know the race that put Ryan Blaney on the map is that Pocono race. Back, way back when, I want to say it was 2021 when he won at Pocono with Wood Brothers. Before, I think we even had a channel. He comes back and he wins that Pocono race. That was the epitome of Ryan Blaney's career. That was the top moment of Ryan Blaney's career. That's where we figured out who Ryan Blaney was. But then contract issues happen. Things go wrong. And now Ryan Blaney is left searching for a team. And guess who takes a chance on him? Penske Racing. They take a chance on the young guy and they put him in his seat. And he struggles to start, but then he comes back and dominates like a Penske driver. Becomes arguably the best Penske driver for the last couple of years. And puts that organization back to a very big winning team. And he takes that 12 car 
and delivers. It, it was a powerhouse team because Lowski, Blaney, Logano, that was a powerhouse organization. But Blaney started at the bottom and he worked his way up. True NASCAR story that I think we should all applaud. And in today's race, I told you guys last week, I think Ryan Blaney. I wish I was a bet. I wish I was old enough to bet because I would have bet Ryan Blaney. I just after what happened last week, after that huge win, and just looking at the old facts, it was Ryan Blaney. You know, and, and we'll talk about the other guys in a second. But Ryan Blaney is the, I want to say, the top notch, the, the best of the best when it comes to NASCAR and when it comes to just winning in moments you need to win. But I think it's one of the best stories of a champion in a while. And I'm not the biggest Ryan Blaney fan, but I really think that a championship story, this may be one of the top ones that we've had in a while. We'll get back to Ryan Blaney. We'll get back to his championship in a second. But let's talk about the other four NASCAR drivers who unfortunately aren't going to get to hoist that trophy. And we'll go in chronological order in the way that they finished in today's race because um, that is the way they'll finish in the standings. And then we'll talk about some other things. Kyle Larson finished third, just short of a championship. And I said it last week as well. Though I think Ryan Blaney is going to win the championship... This is Kyle Larson's championship to lose. But he had a season of checkers or wreckers. I've been saying this the entire year. It was either checkers or records for Ryan Blaney. He either won or lost. It was really that simple. And unfortunately, uh, today obviously wasn't his win day. But he kind of was around for the most of the race. And he had an incredible playoffs. And if you had to ask me of any of these championship four, who deserved the most, I would say probably Larson or probably Byron, right? Uh, probably the two guys that deserve the championship the most. Unfortunately for the five car, they just didn't have a fast enough of a car. Ryan Blaney had the car to beat all race long, if you ask me, out of the four playoff drivers. Of course, Ross Chastain had the car to beat. So Ryan Blaney had it and, for the most part, held it in the entire race. But that five team, Kyle Larson, they, they're going to have to change some things for next year because you can't always have a checkers or records season. Obviously, it, it helps with this playoff format that you only have to win a race and you're in, but checkers or records isn't always the best philosophy. But him and Cliff Daniels, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys right now, this will not be the last time we see him in the championship four. I see, uh, I see Larson kind of going on a run that we saw Kyle Busch go on, that we saw Martin Truex go on, where they appear in the championship four almost every single year. And I can see that in the future for that five team. Unfortunately, they don't get the chip today, but... I think that there's plenty more championships in their future, and I, I would be shocked if they don't come back next year. His teammate, William Byron, finished in fourth place, a young guy who had the best season, I would say, the best season of his career, and I could argue that he had the best season out of any NASCAR driver. A breakout year, five or more wins, comes into the playoffs, and gets to the championship four for the first time. Out of the Hendrick cars, William Byron, maybe coming into this year, was ranked number three. But he had, I would say, his breakout year. Now he's a threat. And you head into next year, we're going to be watching William Byron. William Byron will be on our radar. And he is now the threat to be wrecking with, I think. You know, you don't just come into a season, win north of five, and just fall off the map. He was good at every single type of racetrack. And he stuck with it in the playoffs. He was still even good in the playoffs. So, uh, so excuse me. So William Byron, though, Though he didn't win the championship, and I didn't think he had it, honestly. He still ran well. He led a little bit today. I thought he he could win, but I think he was an outside pick. He's still super young. He's still got a long career. Can he run back the season he had this year, next year? I don't know. I really don't know if he will be able to do it. That's going to be a tough hill to climb to run back. Such an amazing season, but I wouldn't count him out, and I wouldn't count anyone from that team out, honestly. I think... They are huge threats. Huge threats. I think we would be crazy not to consider them big threats. The other guy, Christopher Bell, was the only guy that didn't finish today's race. He got involved in an accident. And it just stinks for Christopher Bell. But I think it is a highlight of Joe Gibbs Racing season. They just weren't there this year. And though they competed at the end, and though they had a couple wins, they just weren't there. And unfortunately... Crashing out in the championship four is not what anybody wants. It, it's not something that anyone wants to happen, but it did happen for the 20. All, all in all, though, Christopher Bell, two times in the championship four the last two years, deserves a round of applause. I think Christopher Bell is kind of 
becoming the number two at JGR. He's the future of Joe Gibbs Racing. When Martin Trix Jr. retires, he'll fall into that two spot. He'll become the future. And eventually when Hamlin retires, I think he'll be number one, unless something dramatic changes. Christopher Bell is the guy. He is the future. He's kind of, I think he's kind of represents part of that future of the sport. Part of the future of the sport lies in the 20 team. They find it in the playoffs and they win in clutch moments, unfortunately, yet to be able to win in the playoffs. Before we take a look at the finished results, let's dive a little deeper into this championship conversation. Uh, Penske Racing, as a whole, has now won two championships in NASCAR in a row. They continue to be a gigantic threat in IndyCar and all over the world. You know, I think when we think about best motorsports team in the world, we probably think about Hendrick Motorsports right away. And I'm not a Penske fan any way, shape, or form. Most of you longtime viewers know I'm not a big Penske guy. But they now, I would say, have put themselves as the most dominant motorsports team in the world. And you could say, sure, Hendrick's way better, or, or maybe an F1 team's way better. I, I don't know. But across all motorsports, I think you have to look at Roger Penske and what he's done in motorsports and just say, wow, that is something to just pat your head and pat your hat around. Because... No guy has been this good, at, and even Hendrick has not been this good at both IndyCar, at both NASCAR, and so on and so forth. Um, I think he deserves a huge round of applause because what he's done, and what he's done just as a guy and as a person in motorsports, investing in it, is huge. So I gotta say, first off and foremost, Congratulations to Roger Penske and that entire organization. It was an organization that deserves a, a ton of applause for what they've done. And the fact is, I think they are now the number one team in motorsports. I want to quickly note on Jonathan Hassler. He is now a championship winning crew chief. So it's, it's only, by the way, his second full season as a crew chief. And he's a champion. So I think that shows maybe how he is. Their relationship on and off the track is such an important thing. And remember, it's his. It's only his second season. And he's already going to the championship and winning. And, and he, sure, the driver plays such a big role. But especially at these races and strategy races and playoff races, number one, keeping your driver in check. And number two, going out and actually winning. All right, let's take a look at the finishing results one final time this season. You'll see only one guy highlighted in yellow, and that's your champion. But for the first time, and for as long as I can remember, it didn't take the race win to win the championship. Ross Chastain will win the actual race. Now, those of you not new to NASCAR, or new to NASCAR, excuse me, will not understand. But you don't have to win the race to be the champion. You just have to finish ahead of all your other championship four guys. So Ross Chastain gets a win. Big job for him. He dominated the race. But no one really cared because we all were caring about the championship. And that was Ryan Blaney in second place. Again, we've talked about it all day. Big congratulations. Kyle Larson, William Byron, two guys in the race, finished 3-4 right there with the championship four. Chris Buescher ends his amazing year in fifth. Look forward to what we see next year. Truex was in the mix today. Had a really rocky playoffs, but in an incredible regular season. He finished sixth. Kevin Harvick. Let's mention Harvick here for a second. This was the last time we will ever see Kevin Harvick in a NASCAR race in the cup series he'll be in the booth next year but can we just get a round of applause for kevin harvick he, he, there was such amazing moments this weekend um that we saw but harvick was a true staple in the sport the 2014 champion as well as a multi-time race winner unfortunately we didn't get to see him go to victory lane this year but i think kevin harvick is one of the you know we're seeing a lot of these old greats go a lot of guys that you know, I remember watching all the time, and I remember loving and hating, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm a relatively young fan as well, but this is kind of the first guy that I watched for a while that is gone, and it, it kind of, it was a little sad. You know, I get, I get Johnson, but I never got to see Johnson in his heyday. I was never watching during that. I got to see Harvick be a part of the big three and be a part of that. So it's just kind of the first guy that kind of hits for me. I, I know some of you older guys will be like, what are you talking about? But you know, I'm 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 very much probably one of the part of the youngest generation that watches NASCAR, so that's that. Denny Hamlin eighth highlight year, but unfortunately yet again, no championship for him. 
Mike Liddell had an incredible season, qualified for the playoffs, and more. Finishes 9th. Bubba Wallace in 10th. Great year for him as well. Daniel Torres in 11th. Not a win. He needs to bounce back here next year. We'll see what happens. Austin Dillon ends his season in 12th. It was a season for Austin Dillon. Eric Amarola in 13th. We know Eric Amarola will also not be returning, allegedly. I mean, we said this last year too, but it doesn't look like he'll be back next season. So that's that on Eric Amarola. Ryan Priest in 14th and Brad Kozlowski in 15th. Let's hit the gas and hit the brakes. First, let's do it on the race. Let's hit the gas or hit the brakes on the race. Every championship race is interesting, exciting, and comes down to the end. Yeah. To hit the gas, I'm giving it an A. Good racing. Now, again, the one negative part of me today is I think we need to change up the venue. We'll be here again next year at Phoenix, but I do believe the venue needs a change. I, I know we said this before, but I'm not a fan of staying in one venue all the time. And then... Let's hit the gas or hit the brakes on the entire NASCAR season. And I'm going to be pretty positive with this. There wasn't too many races I hated. There's a lot of races I liked. And I know we're going to probably jump into the numbers the next few weeks and look at all the little statistics, but we're not doing that today. I just, I just want to give this race, uh, this season, I'm going to hit the gas on the season, obviously. Yeah. I love NASCAR, and I can't give it lower than an A- minus this year. I really liked it. We'll look through all the numbers in the next few weeks to see every race, what I thought about it, but for the most part, I think an A- minus is very much worthy of that. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you for watching this entire season, NASCAR fans. We'll keep you in the loop the next few weeks. We'll have a couple reaction videos and stuff like that of NASCAR content, and if anything breaks over the offseason, I will be here to break it all down for you. Um, we're going to jump into NFL the next few Mondays, so make sure to tune into that. But besides that, thank you all for watching. Have an, if, have an amazing day. Have an amazing week. Thanks for a great season, NASCAR fans. I always hate signing off for this. But 103 days from now, we'll be back for the Daytona 500. So I'll see you then. I can't. I don't know what else to say. I hate signing off for the NASCAR season. Thank you guys so much. I love this sport. I love you. I'll see you again with more content later and more um, content on the NFL as well. But thank you so much, guys. You're my, you are the rock of this channel. You literally are the part that watches the most. So anyway, thank you guys so much. Peace out.